Would we be happy living on one of these old ocean liners? There are stories of people who have lived on cruise ships, but the thing is, is that modern cruise ships are designed to be enjoyable from start to finish. So, of course those people were happy living on them, although it was very expensive. But I thought about the old ships, because as an ocean liner fanatic, and I'm sure you've probably had this question too, or thought about um, what it would be like to live there. I know for one thing, I have considered what it would be like to live on my favorite ships like Lusitania or Mauritania if they were still around, um, living on the Queen Mary. And the thing is, is that it got me thinking, would we enjoy it? Now, it must be said that humans have been known to live in very uncomfortable places. You know, there are stories of people in the war who were living in tiny little caves that were carved out of the mud. So humans can survive virtually anywhere, but the thing is, is this isn't about surviving, this is about what is comfortable to us. Would we be happy living on Olympic or Titanic if they were still around, or Queen Mary or Mauritania or Oceanic? What would it be like? And so I think the first thing we have to discuss is the living space. So as you know, the staterooms don't have their own kitchens. I can't think of an early ocean liner that had kitchenettes, as far as I can tell. They had pantries at best, but otherwise they were basically just rooms in a hotel. But what made it even less comfortable is that it wasn't exactly like a hotel. Hotels generally lend more space to their rooms. Ocean liners limited the amount of space that their cabins had. Even the largest suites on these old ocean liners were still far smaller than the suites at an equivalent brick and mortar hotel. So would people be comfortable living in those? Well, people have said that, th that their experience in these staterooms on ocean liners have been positive and some people say negative. Obviously, people who stayed in third class on these ships did not enjoy their experience as much as they would being at home or something. Um, but there were stories of people who stayed in first class on various ships who really, really loved it. But let's think about the context. Even if they give praises about how great their experience was on that ship, you have to remember that they knew they were only spending a certain amount of days there. They knew that in the end they were leaving, it was temporary. And let's not also forget that the context also involves the time frame they lived in and what other ocean liners offered at the time. So if someone stayed aboard one of the suites in Olympic or Titanic, or let's just say Olympic, would they have enjoyed it better than one of the suites aboard Oceanic, for instance? Well, yes. If someone stayed aboard a suite on the Olympic, they'd say, I loved my experience compared to Oceanic or compared to Carmania. Uh, but we have to remember that that is a circumstantial point of view. If that person were to then stay on a modern cruise ship, they might think that a modern cruise ship was even better. It, it's hard to say, but that is essentially what I'm trying to say here is what is more comfortable. Even I myself find it hard to believe. I, I feel like I want to say, oh, I would love living on the Queen Mary for the rest of my life. But when I look at it in reality, the amount of space I'd be allotted in one stateroom is not enough for me. Not for the long run, maybe for a short stay, maybe even a stay for a month or two, but n not for permanent stay. Then you also have to consider that everything you need on these older liners was usually outside of your room. The more modern ships like the RMS Queen Mary had bathrooms in their first class staterooms, but a lot of ships such as Olympic, Titanic, Britannic, 
they were designed to share bathrooms among even other first-class suites. So you didn't necessarily always have your own bathroom, you had to share. And then with the older liners, people didn't necessarily take showers or baths in them as often as we would today. So sometimes, even though you may share one bathroom with someone else in their suite, uh, you would probably have to share a bathtub with several suites. They had a special room, a bath room, where you could take showers and baths and you would have to share that with several different people. It wouldn't be very pleasant by today's standards. And so if you wanted to stay on these ships, they'd need to have some kind of major overhaul to account for that. Not to mention also that if you want to eat something, you'd have to eat them, you'd have to eat your food, usually outside of your room. Sometimes you'd have stewards bring you stuff to your stateroom, obviously, sandwiches, tea, a snack, something. But most of the time you had to go to the restaurants on board these ships. And those restaurants only served food during certain times, so you wouldn't always have everything you need. And then lastly, the ships themselves, they're not like cruise ships. Cruise ships are designed to be a destination in and of themselves. So essentially, let's say you were supposed to visit a certain port, but bad weather meant that your ship couldn't make it to that port. So your ship would instead steer somewhere else. Well, it is a bummer, but people staying aboard the cruise ship don't mind so much because the ship itself is the entertainment. So the thing is that ocean liners are not like that. They were only designed to take you from one place to another. They did have ways of entertaining you for, for special events, but it wasn't constant entertainment. It wasn't constant fun. Ocean liners were really just a way for you to get around. And so, if you were living on an ocean liner while it was sailing out in the ocean, you might eventually get tired of it. Only because, again, you're living in a small space with very little to yourself. You always have to wait for things to become available. If you're hungry, you have to wait till the restaurant opens. If you, know, if you want to take a shower, you have to wait for the bathroom to be available. Uh, and of course, entertainment, you'd have to entertain yourself because it was very limited on ocean liners. So by technicality, we could live on ocean liners, but it wouldn't be all that comfortable. That being said, I would still like the experience to stay for a long time on an ocean liner if I could travel into the past. Knowing what ships never met danger, I know what ships to choose. You know, it would be great if I could stay on the Queen Mary or the Queen Elizabeth for a whole month if I were to somehow be able to travel back in time and have an unlimited supply of money. But I don't think in the long run it would be at all very fun to live on them, at least not in the same way that it would be to live on a modern day cruise ship or a modern day ocean liner. Anyway, that's just my little piece here for today, but thank you all for joining me and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or to my YouTube memberships. That way you can get exclusive perks in return. Links are in the description below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.